Books you won't put down. Grab the House of Lazenberry series by author Daniel Webb since his controversial interview at the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast. The books can't stay on the shelf. Grab the series The House of Lazenberry, The House of Lazenberry 1970H, and The House of Lazenberry A Time to Hill. Link in the description box now. Promote your brand here at Viral Hip Hop News. Email me, Sam Ant at thehiphopnews.com. No wait, let's go. Things and it brought back a sense of nostalgia. I know for me, and I'm damn sure, I'm sure for my cousin, you yeah. talked about Wendy Williams at Philadelphia. Because when we were in high school, I mean, obviously we had our local radio stations, but the main radio station we listened to was Power 99. Word. And on Power 99, it was Wendy Williams and Charlemagne the God. And that's how we kind of got an introduction to both of them being from where we were at on the radio and then we finally got the he wasn't in Philly. He was not in Philly. He he I wanna tell you an interesting tidbit, you know, and, and 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 I met him I met him uh we were syndicated in eight markets, uh twelve markets, let me get it right. Uh for a time being, I think it it went as much as twenty two at a time at one point, but one of the markets was an inner city market down in Columbia, South Carolina. Shout out to Columbia. I love those people down there. I got ties down there. My family's from the Carolinas. So, you know, I have, I have my roots are from down there. But needless to say, we're at the radio station. You know, we, when we would go through a lot of these radio stations, they obviously would celebrate and be happy and be able to see the shit in the flesh. And that was a great thing. And I remember everybody was saying like he was like the male Wendy Williams, you know what I'm saying, to me. Like, you know, yo, you know hearing that and I used to she mean a man with it like I'm hearing it uh so you know and I met the young man and you know at the time I didn't realize the uh the, the whole depth of his you know what he what he could do uh I really wasn't studying it that much but you know he definitely made himself known um how I get to how I got to know him was through inner city kind of fucking up uh you know it, it was a live feed that they used to do with the syndication, you know, from four o'clock. And then they changed it to a tape feed that they would play at 10 o'clock because the jock at the time in Columbia was the program director. And he, you know, he didn't want to get pulled off the radio, but he pulled himself off the radio once Inner City told him to in the beginning. But after about six months, he jumped back on and moved our shit to 10 o'clock. And at 10 o'clock, it's a tape. They kept playing the same tape. I'm, uh, they played the same tape during the, uh, uh, a Thanksgiving holiday sort of weekend. And, you know, Charlemagne was a fan, like a lot of other people in the market. And, they, and he made he brought it to my attention that, yo, they keep playing the same show for like 10 days straight. Now, if anybody really knows radio, even if you're doing a pre-recorded situation, you know, if y'all guys doing it, you play the same show every day you're gonna lose people people going you know you're gonna lose you know like people gonna make you aware of it but if they see you still doing it they're gonna fly off tune off whatever so um he was concerned about they reached out to me i thought that was kind of g i took a secret trip down there you know and i went to the studio at night not during the day when everybody you know did you go there during the day everybody's kissing your ass like oh yeah, everything's fine but I went there at night with the engineer there. And just before he was about to play the same tape again, I confronted him, like, yo, what you doing? And he was shocked to death. Like, yo, he, like, he spilled the beans. Let me know. I'm just doing what they tell me to do. OK, so they telling you to play this tape. All right, cool. So then I go back up to New York, get all in New York's ass, you know, because I'm at the headquarters. So it's like, yo, what y'all doing? Y'all fucking up the show? Like, what, what are y'all doing? And at the time, even though these the studious black people probably meant they probably tried to have our best interests at heart. But again, it's about the game of radio and controlling the jock and trying to, you know, I guess devalue them at the point where, you know, whenever your money's going up, they like to keep you steady to where they ain't got to pay you. You know what I'm saying? It happens in sports. It happens everywhere. When you reach a cap, you know, they do things to try to come back at you and say, well, look, these numbers over here ain't as strong. But the reason why they ain't strong is because y'all should be fucking up the show. So anyway, he did that. And I was able to go down there and raise hell. And then the next week when I came back, you know, he let me know that they found out because the, 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 the board op or whatever snitched on him and said that, you know, if we were smart, I should have told him to wait outside while I went in there. But, you know, he was right there. And they 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 kind of gave him the business. Like, he was on every day at the time down there in Carolinas, and they took him off. They're like, oh, okay, you're going to be a smart ass, or we pulling you off and putting you on weekends. Anybody that know real radio know, okay, that, that's, that's your cue that you about to be out. In a minute, yeah. and um, 
me being a stand-up guy that I was at the time, seeing that this this young man was gonna be in a situation, I don't know. I didn't know how much family he had or whatever. All I know is you did something for me, and because I came up here and raised hell, the wrath came back on you. And now you telling me he wasn't saying like do something for me, K. He just was telling me, yo, this is what happened. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, so this is what we're gonna do at the time. We was trying to find people to uh, bounce off of, uh, bounce off of Wendy in the afternoons because you know even though she was you know still doing her thing, because it was turning into kind of like a more of a talky format, and they was they was also this is before PPM kind of came in full steam. And by the way, for even though PPM was kind of there, they still knew that her talent and her value was into talking to the people, so they kind of would let a lot of shit go. But um. At the time, we was we was having other we was having people to come in and bounce off of her comedians from Capone to Drew Frazier, to just different people that we could have come in like for an hour of the show to kind of like the link commentary whether they come in at the four play or four just to have more variety. And I told him, I said, listen, man, you know, I don't know how this gonna work out, but off the strength of what you did, I'm gonna bring you up here. I'm gonna let you stay in my crib, okay? You're gonna try it for two weeks. It could last a week or two, or whether I don't know what it's gonna do, but we can see where it goes. Motherfucker came up there, like I said, I'm coming to the crib. And at the time, not my crib, not my marital home at the time, but I had another crib and I let him stay there. And you know, he ain't had much clothes or stuff. And I don't know if he anticipated it being the long term, but or whatever. But that that whole moment lasted like seven years. And ironically, at the time that I threw him in the source. At BLS, not at Power 99, we was doing a VH1 that was putting together a show based on like a, a Howard Stern type of show being taped from the studio called Wendy Williams is on Fire. And they didn't even know that I was going to throw this little dude in there. He was on TV like a week after he was there. And, you know, he, he, was, he wasn't the same person that he is now. He was definitely informative he was a very 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 sparky informative dude that came in as her as her like little brother uh righteous sidekick you know what i'm saying you know and it worked and it worked and even though uh, a lot of people at the radio station hated him you know like like i would go into meetings and they'd be like what the fuck you doing like no 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 and I would even go as far as to say, even she told me that he ain't what he, he is not who you think he is. I remember she used to tell me that constantly and I used to fight and be like, nah, little dude, because I'm coming from, I'm coming from a street perspective of things. Like I'm trying to create a family in a sense, right, like, right. like, yo, this my, you know, and I, and I could have signed him. And it was a lot of days that I, I would, I would come at him like, you ready to sign a deal? Like, yeah. And I would just wait because I wanted him to feel like if he did that, that it's something that you want to do. I learned from that mistake, you know what I'm saying? I probably should have signed them, but I don't want nobody to be signed to me or working with me if they don't want to be there, or if they got ulterior motives or shit, which I could not see, foresee. But I absolutely, you know, uh, fought for him until he got his first salary. So there's a lot of um, misconceptions, I think, in one of his books where he, he said he didn't get paid. Mm -hmm. Let me clarify not getting paid in the number one market when no one would have recognized you or picked you for nothing. Let's be, let's be clear. There's a lot of people that are now juggernauts in the number one market of radio, including my brother Funkmaster Flex, who carried records for Red Alert. Uh, you got your Wendy's, who was uh, Yvonne Mobley's. Like, her first slot was not just uh, getting a, a, her whole show. She was had to do her, she did the weather in the mornings on Kiss, and that blew that shit up. She took that little crack and blew it up. So if you got any type of a leeway, as y'all guys would know, in this number one market, to when there's limited airspace for people, mm -hmm. you should be thankful, okay? And I definitely moved shit out the way, even unbeknownst to like my ex-wife at the time, who again, I guess she was for like, because I believed in dude. And, and you know, he, 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 he liked to think he didn't get paid. Of course you didn't get paid. But you didn't get paid, but you was getting taken care of. And then when I say taking care of, like when I eat, little bro, you eat. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like I get some sneakers and whatever. I got motherfuckers bringing me trunk loads full of Air Force Ones at the time and shit. Yeah, man. And like, like, like taking them around everybody and all the clubs so that if you want to go grab you some money because you know, just like uh, having a record deal. If you're not making money off those uh, off those royalties, 
then you go make them off your shows for the time being. So that means you could go and do any type of hostings and get you some money and, you know, get busy. And you could do that under the geese of not me having no pressure on you and your room and board was fucking free. Because, you know, I mean, it was a $5,000 a month condo he was living in. So, you know, and I don't regret because I'm about helping my people. You know what I'm saying? I'm about helping them to a great degree. And I think that his talent did flourish, obviously. I think the loyalty went left. And that's a shame. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I don't regret it. There was a time where I felt like, you know, there was a lot of things I, a lot of things I wanted to do. But, you know, now, like I said, I just salute, dude. Like, you know, God will handle all that. You know what I'm saying? God is taking care of all that. You know what I'm saying? I remember it was in our last meeting that we had, he said something to the effect of, you know, everybody hates you, man, and you the way you move and whatever, whatever. I'm like, oh, in my mind, I'm like, where they hate me? They hated you too, but they got you now. So now they're going to tell you they hate me. But mm -hmm. you're going to learn how slimy this New York market is and this business is. I ain't going to have to tell you. You're going to know. And only a certain amount of people could be able to see the situation. And God bless all the accomplishments that look like they're doing what they're doing. But you can see behind the scenes when you don't got a real team and shit, you're just a malleable object. You know what I'm saying? You and the growth is limited when you don't when you don't have the confidence in your in your hope. Well, it ain't just team foundation. At the time, the foundation that he came out of from this market, that from 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 this situation, not not. What he was doing in, you know, in, in the southern markets, no disrespect to them, but what he was able to be part of in this number one market being harnessed by us in a sense, that was, there's, there's a bunch of people that wish they could have got that kiss of death. And, that, and there's a bunch of people that hated us because we allowed that to happen. But I seen a different vision and what it brought to the New York State Tri-State area because everybody from this area got people from down south. Every for the most part, you know what I'm saying? Either you got people from 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 Yard, because you from Jamaica, or you from, you know, it's the Caribbean element, or you you, you straight up from, you know, from the South. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and and he resonated and he would and he, he became that. And I'm 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 just even though I'm not happy with the absolute outcome, I'm happy that I was able to be part of of, of that history in a sense. And you know, nobody would give me that credit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not taking no credit away from her and being able to, to be able to, because because of that situation, because of what she was able to do with her talent was he was was what gave him him his gateway. But she wasn't with that shit at all. Mm. Like 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 if I would have said yo he got to go out there we get good I can't I can't wait for him to go I fought for that dude and I fought for his first seventy thousand dollars in the city. You know what I'm saying? You know when he did get paid I fought and they did not want to give it to him. So, you know, 